For some camera enthusiasts like myself, anamorphic lenses are the holy grail for filming narrative content. I've done a deep dive on why the anamorphic look is so special in this video. Finding an affordable set of anamorphics is something many of us have been waiting and hoping for since we picked up a camera and we've encountered an anamorphic renaissance over the last couple of years with budget anamorphic lenses from Surrey and Great Joy offering a taste of this holy grail. But in my opinion, all of those options have had shortcomings. Recently, a new set of anamorphics have been released by the former Great Joy team, and they might just be the best budget anamorphics money can buy right now. The Blazar Remus. I pre-ordered the set right after their announcement and have now had the chance to run some tests, shoot some test footage, and tell you everything you need to decide if they're the right anamorphics for you. Firstly, the set comes in a nice Pelican case with a mysterious fourth slot for presumably an upcoming wider lens. Currently, the three lens set consists of 45, 65, and 100 millimeters. The most exciting point about the set is just how affordable it is at 2,800 US dollars for the three lens plus the case, which make them one of the cheapest anamorphics out there. They are also full frame anamorphics, meaning you can really get the most out of their 1.5 times stretch by pairing them with a full frame camera like my Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame. The lenses cover the full open gate sensor with just a hint of vignetting at the corners. What this means is that a Remus 1.5 times on full frame, while not exactly the same compression wise, will offer what feels more like a two times anamorphic field of view might look like if you were using a camera with a super 35 millimeter sensor. All the focus and iris gears are in the same place with each focal length getting slightly larger but all of them remaining incredibly compact. The gears feel really smooth and consistent with a decent amount of resistance for pulling focus. It's not stiff but not loose. These are a great option for smaller crews or one man person camera operators as their size means you don't even need to utilize a lens support. This makes them much easier to use than say the Viltrox Epix, the Surrey Venus line or the Lauer Proteus lenses. They all have a 77 millimeter filter front uh, and it's easy to put screw on ND filters or diopters without any issues. Another winning feature of the Remus set is the constant squeeze factor, which means no weird aspect ratios or problems when your subject moves closer or further away from the lens. This has been a problem with many of the budget anamorphics so far, so having a constant squeeze is incredibly valuable. The anamorphic flares are pretty controlled and I like the look of them much more than, for example, the aggressive Surrey flaring. And these definitely seem to have hit the sweet spot. In terms of the image itself, from my tests, these are no doubt very vintage soft feeling. And for me, this is exactly the thing I have not found in a budget anamorphic up until this point. They really do have the character of one of your favorite films from the 1970s or 80s. It's a little bit dirty, it's a little bit grungy, and it's exactly what you need to take the edge off a 4K, 6K, 8K camera image and make it feel a little more organic. In terms of sharpness, take a look at these tests as we move through from wide open to f4 with each lens. It should be noted that the 100mm is an f2.8 while the 45 and 65 start at f2. They all seem to colour match and be consistent throughout the set. However, in terms of the vintage feel, the 100mm is on another level. It is soft even when you stop down. And when you're wide open, there is crazy looking bloom and halation along with that softness. This goes away as you stop down, but just look at this when it's wide open. I mean, this is freaking intense. Is this a lens made in 2024 or 1974? What sorcery are Blazar doing in here? So I think the 100 millimeter will be a love it or hate it for many people in terms of the amount of soft character it produces. The 45 and 65 are much closer and consistent match in terms of sharpness and completely usable at f2. 
The set offers a really nice set of focal lengths, but it is certainly missing a true wide angle. While the 45mm is great, I think we'd all like to see something significantly wider to make this the complete package. Close focus ranges from between about 68 and 71 centimeters across the set, which is pretty good for anamorphics, and it's nice to see once again how consistent they are across the focal ranges. You do get some pretty significant barrel distortion on the edges, but this is par for the course with anamorphics and much more pleasing than the pincushion distortion from the nanomorphs. So what's the final verdict? For me, these are easily the best budget anamorphics to have been released to date, and they are essentially the poor man's Atlas Mercuries, but they cost $7,000 less per lens. It'll be interesting if these hurt Mercury sales as they do offer a lot of the same traits at a fraction of the price. I rate these above the Surrey Saturn and Venus sets and the Lawa Nanomorphs, both in terms of their design and build quality and the image they produce. Maybe their closest competitors are the Viltrox Epics, which certainly offer a more premium, sharper look, but are much chunkier and only 1.33 times stretch. Meanwhile, you can also get the Remus 3 lens set for the price of basically one Viltrox. So if you like clean and clinical, this lens set would not suit you. But for the price and the style, these are the new standard for affordable anamorphics. The Remus set to me feels the most authentically anamorphic of all the budget anamorphic lenses. It gets the closest to that old school, big film anamorphic feel of the classic films and at this price, that's pretty damn cool. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker and I'll see you when I see you.